Praise the Lord. Uh, my mom, <clears throat> my mom sent me a uh, something that someone posted on Facebook that she shared with me, and um, I thought I would share it with you because it is a testimony of one how faithful God is, and two. of our faith when we know that the Lord's going to do what he said he's going to do. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to kind of translate on the fly, so bear with me. But it says, two years ago today, our lives were changed. We received the news that no parent wants to hear. Your son has a tumor. He has cancer terminal stage. Throughout these two years, we have cried, we have laughed, we have despaired, there has been frustration. There have been moments that we have not understood. Our hearts have been broken several times. We have spoken about birthdays, and we've even planned a funeral twice. We have asked what do you want to be when you grow up? And with an, a hole in our heart, we have celebrated every progress from his physical therapy. We have stayed silent when his pain cannot be comforted with a hug. But even though that's happening, we can say that we are better human beings, better parents, better husband and wife, better friends, and we have become more close, we have become closer to God than in any other circumstance. Today, those that are our true friends, you know who you are. In these two years, we have known compassion and how much a city can give to that those who need. We have continued to walk knowing that even at this very moment, the Lord has kept us. Kevin, that's the kid's name, has contradicted every diagnosis time after time. Today he sings, he smiles, he takes my hand and we dance. He likes to go shopping and to listen to his dad play and sing, play the guitar and sing. <clears throat> he still eats his Vienna sausages and he, <laughs> and he likes his carrot Cheetos, the onion ones, apparently that's what he calls them. God continues to be faithful. We continue to believe in him even though we don't see the road, we know He's going to show it to us. Two years, although not, although it might seem not too long, it has seemed like a lifetime. But we continue to declare life, and the Father will decide, and He always knows best. <clears throat> uh, I think this kid is now six, and they've been going through this for, for the two years, like I mentioned. And um, I actually know both of them because <clears throat> I went to school with them. And, uh, you know, to me, this is very encouraging because we're all going through a trial. My trial is not like this one. Uh, to me, this is actually harder. But I do know this. The Lord made us a promise, and in his word he says, I cannot lie. So, whatever it is that we're seeing, it doesn't matter because we know that our eyes are trying to be blinded by things that we know that are not true. So, uh, yeah, and then yesterday, my wife and I are having this, uh, 
we don't see eye to eye on, on something right now. And um, it's making her mad the decision that I made on what we're gonna do. And she keeps trying to get me to change my mind. So yesterday, and what, she said something that I thought at the time she meant it to hurt me. But then this morning when I got up, I started thinking about that. And as I started thinking about that, I immediately got this feeling that said to me, no, that wasn't meant to hurt you. That was a prophecy. Because what she said was, we won't be having these problems next year. So even though she might not know it, she just mm -hmm. declared there, mm -hmm. yeah. everything's gonna go away. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of her now getting in sync with what's gonna happen. People keep telling me, you know, you gotta know when enough's enough. That's fine, but you're looking at this from a human perspective. Right. I cannot look at it that, that way because then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go crazy yeah. more than I already am. But anyway, that's what I wanted to share. You know, God's faithful. He's great. He's awesome. I love him. Amen. And everything he does in our lives, and I'm just expectant for whatever is coming. It's going to be great. It's like a bubble that, that's yeah. right now it's growing and growing and once that bubble bursts this place is going to be packed and people are going to line up around the block and it's going to be good it already is yeah. yeah all right you got anything to share mike yeah uh be bound up, be tied up, and <clears throat> for hunger, fall upon these people. Not so much the ones that are homesick, but I mean all the ones that the Lord is calling here to create a famine within them. A famine that it's a, it's, it's a lack of a, a good word, other than that's the only word I can think of right now, to create a famine in them. <clears throat> to hear what is being spoken, what is being proclaimed here, what is being released here. Um, when other people are actually <clears throat> visiting from time to time and, and just, just in the awe of things, and then we don't see them again, it's like they, they ran by the banqueting table to grab something off the table and kept running, but did they just taste? Or did they just scarf it down mm -hmm. and not actually taste what was going on? Mm -hmm. So the famine is there, but I just pray for the manifestation or the revelation of what's going on. It just seems like the eyes are closed and ears are here to what really is going on. excited all these things that are happening it's, it's, it's so, so good I'm so glad <laughs> that I made the decision that I made two years ago yeah so good all right well let's stand
Father, we thank you for bringing us together yes, in your name, Lord. We thank yes. you for your promises. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, for all the blessings. We thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for shining your light through us so that we go out into this world and we touch other people and we show them who you are and they come and, and see and know who we see, which is you, Father, a good God, a giving God, a loving God, Father, that you never abandon us. You provide for our every need. You comfort us when we are being oppressed, Father. You have set us free. We thank you, Father, for, for the plan that you have for this church, for the plan that you have for every person in this church, Lord. Each one of us plays an important part on this that you are revealing. You are uniting the regions of the state, the city, and you're going to continue to unite until the entire world the entire Let's nation that has said one nation under God, Lord. We're all going to be united. We're all going to be worshiping you and praising you, Lord. And more blessings are to be given. We thank you, Lord. We right now lift those that are in need, whether it's for healing, for manifestation, provision, Father, <clears throat> restoration or a broken relationship, or anything. Right now, give them that revelation. Show them who you are. Reveal to them who the Spirit is. The Lord wants them to understand and see. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for saving us. We are your children, Lord. We are your children. Jesus is Lord, Father. We continue to declare who He is. We thank You for our own salvation. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, because every good and perfect gift comes from above. And all we have to do, Father, is to speak Your word and believe in You. There is no works in Your blessing. <laughs> February 13th, Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes, Eastern Gate House of Prayer, and we will go where we are led. <coughs> All right, let's pick the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. For those for those of us who of the for those of us who weren't here Sunday, yeah.
didn't put any words up because I didn't put any words up because I know you guys. <laughs> you, you don't even look that way. You're looking that way. So, hallelujah. Maybe on some Sunday morning I'll accidentally put the song to.
man may let us down, Lord. No man may drink discouragement. Lord, we know we are not perfect in our flesh, Lord. But we know we get easily distracted, Lord, of the things of this world.
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. We love your presence, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. Yes. At your right hand, favor forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name this evening, Lord. We magnify you and exalt you, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord, above everything, before everything. Hallelujah. Through everything. You are a great and a mighty God. There's none like you, Lord. You alone are God. Yes. And your word is final in every situation in every circumstance, over every power, in the earth, yes. beneath the earth, yes. and above the earth. Hallelujah. You alone are God. Yes. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless us for the rest of this service, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Help us to hear what the Spirit is saying, yes. Lord. We might be changed. Yes, Lord. We might see the victory that we already have. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you all tonight. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, worship team. Barely. You did good. Team. It takes at least two to be a team, I think. So you made it. You did it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be brief tonight too, so you can get home before the freeze. This is like the movie. Anybody seen Frozen? Or do you have any kids under 16? Praise <laughs> the Lord. There you go. Well, you know what I'm talking about then. That's kind of the way it's been here the last week or so, but. Hallelujah. It's going to get better. Praise the Lord. By the weekend, it should be in another thaw. Expects back up in the 30s and 40s on Saturday, I think they said, and upper 30s on Sunday. So it doesn't get a whole lot better than that in Iowa in February. So thank the Lord for those blessings. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get right to it tonight. Amen. If, uh, if you will, Roberto, let's start with Colossians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Okay, so ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Say so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, there's a scripture that says, uh, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, I was thinking about this. It talks about that clear back in the book of Numbers. And if you would, uh, Roberto, go to Numbers uh, chapter and I was just looking at this before the service so i got to find it again Verse 5 will be enough, I think. Five, 5 and 6. And when the camp setteth forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger skins. Now, first thing is the ark doesn't contain the presence of God. The ark contains the Ten Commandments, the stone tablets and the rod of Aaron and so forth. The mercy seat 
represented where God was. God was behind the veil in the temple or the tabernacle. And they would sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, which represented God's throne. Uh, I've taught about it before. Elasterion in the New Testament is the Greek word for mercy seat, and that's what they call Jesus. He is the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. The mercy seat set above and was like the lid of the ark, so it covered the Ten Commandments. It covered the, those stones, which represented God's mercy and God's grace between us and the law. Now, so with that in mind, I don't know if anybody's ever seen badger skins, but they're not like ermine. They're not like mink. They're ugly. Badger skins are just skins. They're not that attractive. But it represents us, that God takes his presence and covers it with our earthen vessels, mm -hmm. with badger skins, with just the common. So that's, the, the, that's where we're working from tonight. In fact, that's the truth about everything in the gospel, is that God shows these fragile, uh, not so pretty most of the time, skins to dwell in. We are the presence of God. And the moment we begin to focus on us, on those badger skins or on that earthen vessel, we miss everything that God's trying to do. It's just a, an example of what you were talking about to begin with, Roberto, how easily we can be distracted from the spiritual by the natural. Mm -hmm. We can see ourselves, we see our actions, our behaviors, our you know, attitudes at times, and all those things that are just the natural. And it takes us away from who we are in Christ and what power and authority we have and what victory we have when we focus on him. So in Colossians 3.3, 3, if you'll go back there real quick, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So, you know, Paul isn't saying that uh, we're, we're going to be like Jesus. What he's saying is you are like Jesus. Praise the Lord. So being in Christ is the perpetual s source of our becoming like Christ. I'm going to say it again. Being in Christ is the perpetual source of our becoming like Christ, not vice versa. We don't become more and more like Christ and then we're in Christ. We're in Christ and that's what creates a perpetual source for us to be like Christ. Amen. Amen. Just like the, the, the ark in the badger skins, just like the, the spirit of God, the presence of God in, in earthen vessels. Amen. Look at, let's look at Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to read a lengthy portion here because I am going to be brief tonight, but let's read Colossians chapter 1, 19 through 29. So we've got like 11 verses here. For it pleased the Father that in him, and I want you to pay particular attention to this, this entire section of scripture here. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. This is the grace of God. Amen. That's the faith that was once delivered. Praise the Lord. And remember he tells us if you, if you, if you go back to the law, he told the Galatians, then you've fallen from grace. You've left the gospel. You've left the faith. There's only one faith. Praise, Praise the Lord. One faith, one, one Lord, one baptism. Okay, so if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. This is the dispensation of grace, has been since the resurrection of Christ. 
even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints, to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Praise the Lord. So here's what he's saying. You've already been qualified. You've already been delivered. You've already been transferred. You've already been redeemed. You've already been forgiven. You've already been made perfect. Praise the Lord. So every day, what God wants you to experience practically can only happen as you come to a deeper understanding of who and what you are positionally. Praise the Lord. Amen. It isn't this. It isn't what's going on. It's It's the position that I hold, which is in Christ. Amen? That makes me more than a conqueror. That means I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like Paul says, this is his working, which worketh in me mightily. It's a position. Paul says, I'm doing it, but it's not me. You know, I'm dead, yet I'm alive. But it's not my life. It's the life of Christ living through me. Amen? So religion tells us, to. here's how you mature. Here's how you grow. It means in, in, in religious terms, you've got to go out and you've got to obtain these qualities, amen, and attitudes that you lack. You've got to work, work, work. You've got to get out there and be better this and more of that and, and less of this. You've got to, have, you've got to work and, and, find, and, and obtain more joy and more patience and uh, more faithfulness and so on and so forth, Amen. That's what religion teaches you. Even though you get saved by grace, then it tells you this is what you've got to do now from now on. And it's a process. It's going to go on all your life. Amen. Let's look again at Colossians chapter 1, verses 27 through 29. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The only way you can be presented perfect is in Christ, regardless of what else you're doing. If there was some other way, then the Pharisees would have been the, would have been the uh, ideal. They would have been the benchmark you know, for everybody else to try to achieve. And Jesus said their righteousness was filthy rags. Whereunto I also labor, striving. How's he striving? According to his working. According to Christ's work, which worketh in me mightily. And Paul's not trying to be a better Paul. He's just operating based on what Christ has already declared him to be. Because Paul later on will even say, I'm the chiefest of all sinners. That's at the end of his ministry. Not the beginning. Not like, hey, eventually I'm not going to be this chiefest of sinners anymore. At the end he says, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And yet, I am perfect in Christ. I've finished the race. Amen? Amen. So what the Bible teaches is that we mature as we come to a greater realization of what we already have in Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. That may not be what religion teaches, but that's what the Bible's teaching. The Bible's telling us that we mature, we grow, amen, we come to, as we come to a greater understanding of what we already have in Christ. Amen. It's that simple. The fact is, the gospel transforms us precisely because it's not a message about our internal transformation, but it's about Christ's external substitution. Amen. We still are making it about something that we do, even if we say we're doing it from the inside. We're not. It was already done. It's, it, it, it comes from the inside out, but it was already accomplished by an external substitution of Christ on the cross for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. What we need, we need righteousness, peace, joy, all this in the Holy Ghost. We need all that. But what we need most of all is a substitute uh-huh. because we can't get any of that stuff ourselves. Right. If we could, we'd do it. I mean, wouldn't you if, you, could, if you could just go out and grab joy someplace, you'd do it. You would, you'd get it. If you could have more patience, praise the Lord, you'd get it. You'd have, you'd have it, right? right? 
If you could be more loving and, and all, we would just be that. Yep. Praise the Lord. What we need is a substitute. We need somebody who has done for us and secured for us what we could never do for ourselves. That's Jesus. Praise the Lord. The more, the more we focus on us, again, back to the, what we see with our natural eyes, what we're measuring by circumstances and, and situations, what, what, the more we focus on that, the more we focus on us and our need to get better or to get more or to whatever, the more self-conscious we become and the more neurotic we become. Amen. You spend a day, you know, center focused. You know, I mean, I know that, that, that that's what the Eastern religions tell you. But the truth is, the more you focus on you, the more neurotic you are. Uh -huh. The more aware you are of all of your shortcomings. Right. You got to get past that, praise the Lord. Amen. It's not about behaving better, but it's about believing bigger. Come on. <laughs> praise the Lord. It isn't about behaving better. It's about believing bigger. It's about believing all things through Christ. I can do all things. God will do. God is faithful. i got to believe big. The, my, I'm little here. I, can't, I can only do so much. I see how faulty and, and, and screwed up I am. But if I believe big enough, nothing's impossible. Come on. Amen? Yeah. So it's never been about being better. It's been about believing bigger. Uh -huh. The bigger your God, the bigger your miracles. Amen. The more faithful you believe God to be, the more faithful God is. Amen? Amen. Because it's based on our belief. Yeah. It's based on what we believe. Hallelujah. So we got to believe bigger about what Christ has done. Uh -huh. we got to believe he did more than just deliver us from a devil's hell. Right. we got to believe that he did more than just help us to escape an eternity in some horrible place. He's restored relationship, all of our relationships. He has healed our sicknesses and our disease. He has prospered us. He's made us the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Amen? Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. All of these things He's already done for us. Amen? Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. So, you know, it's amazing how once you begin to see grace and see your position in Christ, everything in the Scriptures changes. I mean, it all comes into context. Now, Scriptures that used to seem contradictory, all of a sudden, they make sense in a way they never made sense before. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Look at that. It's God who works in you both to will what he wants you to do and to do what he wills you to do. Yeah. So not only is it God's will that you do this, but he's in you to make you do it so that you do do it. Do da, do da day all day long. Amen. Amen. And to do of his good pleasure. <clears throat> Amen. So God works his work in you. Now listen to this, which is the work already accomplished by Christ. You see, you shrink. You know, John had to say, I must decrease that he may. You don't have to say that. Because if you're born again, you already have shrunk to nothing as far as God's concerned. Your, your natural man doesn't have to decrease. It's already insignificant. It's dead Come on. and hid in Christ. So, amen. He, God does his work in you. But the work that he does in you is the work that's already accomplished by Christ. Your healing, your deliverance, your restoration, your whatever. It's already accomplished. Come on. Amen? Yeah. Colossians again. Let's go back there to Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Whereof, uh, excuse me, even, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of, his, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So our work, if you can call it that, our work is coming to a greater understanding of his work. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
I mean, if, if you don't know that Jesus suffered those stripes for your healing, it's going to be very difficult for you ever to get healed. So the more you know about what he's done, the more, it, the more you can claim, the more you can have access to. If you don't know that it's not the will of God that you die, then when death comes, you just go, well, you know, it must be the will of God. It's not the will of God that any should perish. Right. He doesn't want, he didn't, death came by sin. Right. Praise the Lord. And how is sin strengthened? By the law. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at Colossians now. Just move on to 28 and 29. whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So what Paul is saying is that growth or maturity always happens in grace. It never happens under the law. It never happens under works. It never happens under your effort. It happens by grace. So the more we're focusing on doing and being, the less maturity takes place. Because right. we're still focused on the badger skins instead of that ark and mercy seat that it's wrapped in, or that is wrapped in it. Yep. And we're focusing on the earthen vessel and not the treasure that's in the vessel. Right. Praise the Lord. All right, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, it sounds like a contradiction from a religious point of view. But the, the truest measure of our growth is when we, when we stop obsessing over our need to improve. So when I hear these things and, and you see these emails and blogs and so on and so forth, and people are saying, well, you know, I just think we need to just, the church just needs to be more holy. The church needs to be more righteous. The church needs to do this and the church needs to do more of that. No, not, not according to the scripture. Come on. Amen. The truest measure of growth is when we stop obsessing about that. The more I hear people obsess about behaviors, the more I realize how immature they are. Now, it doesn't sound right from a religious perspective, but biblically speaking, it's absolutely correct. Because you can't ever get perfect through the law. But he says we've been perfected in Christ. The more we obsess with us and our actions, the less we're focused on his finished work. No matter how you cut it. Praise the Lord. All right, last scripture, Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What, is, what are those things which are above? The finished work. Amen? Amen. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Focus on him, not on us. Amen. The spiritual, not the natural. For ye are dead. So when you start, when you read it all, then you get the context that he's talking about here. If you're focusing on the things on the earth, why for? what for? Because you're dead. Yep. Why would you focus on the things on the earth? They're dead. Come on. And your life is hid with God or with Christ in God. Praise the Lord. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, just to wrap it up, you focus on Christ, you focus on his grace, and his finished work in you. Not what's happening out of you. Not what's happening around you. But you focused on him, you focus on his grace, and the finished work, all of that is already in you. That is what's called the kingdom of God. And out of that kingdom comes every need, every desire, every good thing that the Father has given us, those gifts. 
Amen? Amen. We've, we've got to get past, I mean, it's so easy to get sucked back into this because you hear, and it makes lo sense logically in a natural way that, you know, you should do more and try more. No, I'm saying you will do, you will do good. Amen? When you quit focusing on doing good. When you focus on the fact that you are already good, you're already perfect, then it becomes a natural behavior, not, a, not a, an act, not a, a, a facade, not something to gain favor, but something that's a result of favor. Amen. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing good things. You know that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's when we're struggling to do it and we're measuring those things as the justification for our righteousness and our acceptance with God, we've got it backwards. Because our life, our natural life is dead as far as God's concerned. And we then, who we really are, our, our spirit being, which is eternal, is hid in Christ. In God. That's what Jesus' great prayer, that we would all become one. As I am in you, they will be in me. And we will all be one. Praise the Lord. Can you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thanks, all of you. Have a great rest of the week. Stay warm till Friday, and then you won't have to worry about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be camping out by the weekend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're dismissed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.